Welcome to the Daily Dev Talk with me, Adrian Nanchev, where we explore and share experiences, stories and lessons seven days a week from across the games industry, helping you make the best game you can. Stay tuned for today's episode. Good morning, Overload Nation. Welcome to another episode of the Daily Dev Talk, talking to game developers from across the world to bring you stories, experiences and lessons seven days a week. Today, I'm talking with Tomas Gonzalez from Double Thought Games to talk about their latest, no, sorry, their first game, The Journey. Tomas, tell us about yourself first, please, and how you got into the games industry. Well, um, hello, uh, I'm Tom- Tomas, uh, I'm 18 years old, and uh, well, um, I got into the game industry, uh, I had a little netbook that had uh, this game engine uh, Python so I started programming there but uh, the netbook was awful and I couldn't program there so I downloaded another program to start uh, programming uh, and well it's been four years now since I'm programming and all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. So have you worked on many games before? No, I, I've i done a lot of s- small games but never finished uh, for learning and uh, that that's about it. Uh, mm-hmm. So when you say small games, you're talking global game jams or just things on the side? No, things uh, from the side. Like I created one time for my friends, like a small, like wanna be the guy, uh, like throw game, uh, small ten levels, it's just for fun and and learning. That mm. that's mm-hmm. it. So tell me about the the studio or team that you're with. Uh, how many people is it? What kind of tools do you use? And what's the workflow? Well, uh, we are two people right now, and uh, me. Uh, and my friend Martin, uh, but uh, we got in touch like five years ago uh, on on Skype, I can say, because he lives like uh, 200 miles from here, so it's all done uh, by Skype, and yeah, that's it. And uh, well, our composer, uh, uh, he recently. Uh, came up and he's a really good composer and he's from from England. Hmm. So, so a bit of a quite a little bit of an international team. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So tell me about the journey and what you wanted the player to experience when they played it. Well, the journey it's a game about atmosphere, uh, exploration, more more like no a game that it's hard and you the goal is win or don't die on the goal is uh, enjoy the atmosphere uh, talk to do some quests and uh, yeah enjoy the music the the artwork uh, all that stuff uh, that's what we aim uh, uh, we we uh, if our, it's our first game, so we don't want to do like a big RPG or some, something like that. And we like platformer games and we like mm-hmm. uh, relaxing games, atmospheric. So, yeah, that's the journey. That's pretty feature. understandable. Yeah. Going for something small for the first game. And I think the fact that you went for atmosphere as opposed to do or die, that's an interesting twist. Yeah, yeah. Do you mind talking a little bit more about that? Eh? Well, um, you're like, you can die in the game, but like your character uh, have uh, ha this big world you, you can explore. And well, um, the main feature of the game is like for every biome uh, or character, um, get uh, found finds or get a, a pet with a special ability so helps you to progress to progress in the game and uh, well mm-hmm. what we want to do is like 
every part of the game we want to be like different like we aim for the atmospheric stuff but uh, not always the same uh, like uh, first part like atmospheric second part like platforming and third part or i don't know uh, like puzzle so uh, we don't want to the game to be always the same we want to, the game to be always different so uh, so the the player do, uh, doesn't get bored uh, of the game like exploring or every time you can mm-hmm. over uh, the, the game is always different that's what interesting I'm interesting concept so tell me then how did you go about promoting the game what worked and what didn't work we uh, started uh, well on facebook and here in argentina i got uh, two YouTubers friends and well one Peruvian YouTuber friend and well they helped me a lot and well uh, the game is sharing with friends and that stuff but uh, Steam Greenlight da- does a lot of work because your game is very visible a lot of people can, can check it uh, like hmm. You don't need like a lot of promoting uh, for Steam Greenlight, but well, uh, if your game looks great, uh, take your time and you will be greenlit, of course. Definitely. So, how did you go about funding the game? What methods worked and what didn't work? Well, funding the game, uh, well, um, I, I had like my money to fund the game like uh, for Steam Greenlight and all the stuff but uh, we don't buy any assets and anything like only the money that we spend is on on the Steam Greenlight uh, stuff and that's it we don't we don't waste mm. uh, well waste no we don't minimal yeah. waste yes Okay, very thrifty. Yes. So I'm curious, what was cut from the game and why? Well, um, a lot of stuff. Um, first, we started, We wanted to do another game that was called The Missing Page. And uh, it was like this indie big game, very big game, and uh, I... I realized that I I will never uh, be able to end that, so I started this project. But well, uh, uh, a lot of stuff that I've done in the other game uh, are in this game, but a lot of stuff like I don't know, uh, uh, well, a lot of artwork and other stuff is uh, we don't use that, and a lot of mechanics that we we tested like flying uh, gravity a lot of stuff that well uh, some uh, some uh, features we use and another not so yeah along the game there are a lot of things that you test and you do a lot of ideas but you never use it Uh, It's Mm -hmm. part of making games, I think. Part of the iteration? Yes. So some assets you didn't use. Interesting. Sometimes people tend to... um, Well, tend to scale their game down and just not make them in in general. That's that's different. So what was the biggest thing you learned while working on the game? Well, the biggest thing that I've learned is like... um, you learn more uh, making mistakes than than another uh, than another way. You can learn a lot of you uh, uh, just coding. And, well, I I learn uh, JavaScript, but while coding and a lot of stuff, I learn C sharp by myself. Uh, uh, like work, working and 
uh, is the way to learn i think mm, yeah i think that if you're um if you want to make games you just make games you go out and make them if you want to be a writer you write if you want to be a blogger you blog yeah. if you want to be a singer you sing if you want to be a game developer you develop games yes of course cool I'm glad we're on the same page yes. so i'm curious then what was the worst thing that happened and how did you overcome it well oh uh, yes i was i worked like for a script from the character like for entire day and then my electricity turned off and oh, I lost everything so well um, I try to remember the script but uh, well I I finished it but uh, it was a, a day of work the lost because of that always save <laughs> your now I'm control S control S always <laughs> saving everything. Oh, definitely always save. I think um, if there's some way of setting auto save, just as good. Yes. So I'm curious then, uh, what was the best game dev related purchase you made? Whether it was a software license, a top quality piece of hardware or equipment, uh, or simply a good chair and a, a good desk and a comfortable chair. A good desk, a comfortable uncomfortable chair, uh, chair and well unity unit, unit. Oh, okay <laughs> any specific reason um, well when I was young I I learned programming on YouTube uh, of a channel called Brackis and he programs everything on unity and uh, well uh, I saw like five six videos and i started to learning by myself uh, and well that's why unity because uh, this guy teached on unity and i learned there but i like unreal unreal and i hope it's good i don't remember the other one but well uh, Basically, that's why I use Unity. Because mm -hmm. you saw it being worked on and used before, and that inspired you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then I'm curious, sir, uh, what game dev-related book, lecture, or learning resource can you recommend? I recommend for indie devs a lot of Nicholas Nigren, uh, the creator of Nick Underground, of all the Nick series. Uh, well, Edmund McMillan. Uh, he teaches a lot of stuff, um, a lot of lessons uh, uh, you you will need to when programming uh, and designing, of course. Uh, well, mm -hmm. I and I had like some PDF from a friend that studies on a new at a new university uh, game design and well. I read all. He sent me those PDF and I read all, all that mm -hmm. stuff. Interesting. Okay. So like a Evernote or Trello, do you have a useful or productivity enhancing software, app, extension or website worth sharing? Mm. I don't know. No, I think not. We use like Photoshop and Unity um, that's about it. Ah, there's a, a site that I've used a long time ago. I'm not, I'm not using it now, but it's called Free SFX. That you can, if you don't have any money or, or you don't have like a composer or something like that, you can download like animal sounds, uh, wind sound, uh, and a lot of stuff that you need for the game. And uh, well, it's free. You have to give credit to them, and that's it. So, if you are working alone or if you don't have any money, you can go there. And mm -hmm. interesting. So that's free. FSX. FSX.com, I think. Sound effects. Cool. So, Thomas, what advice? What advice can you give to aspiring game developers? Small indie studios and people trying to get to where you are today. Well, um, 
never never give up uh, uh, programming and if you are a programmer never give up and if you if something doesn't work uh, don't work uh, uh, just take a break a break go outside and uh, it will it will work after and the if you are two people you are only one people you can do it uh, just uh, it, it takes a lot of effort but you you will finish if you want uh, that's my advice uh, never give up and never if you like if you work a lot a lot uh, you will get tired and you will just uh, leave it and the mm. work like some hours no don't work a, like a full day like 18 hours 15 hours is the worst thing that you can do mm. 18 hours is the worst yes 18 15 something of a, a lot if you want like you're very excited and oh i want to finish this stuff this and you are working working work you your head will explode and like you won't you will give up because you i understand and uh, <laughs> you said also not giving up yes i'm reading a book at the moment that talks about every failure is a seed to greater success it's true it's true uh, and at the same time don't let temporary defeat turn into permanent failure that's that's true and uh, all the failures are a seed because uh, it's true that uh, in the game that i worked before uh, like i never finished it but a lot of stuff that of that the game is on this one and uh, if you have like something uh, weird like you you done on the game and well this this doesn't work you uh, put it around the map maybe some uh, like a secret so maybe a speedrunners on people like start to try and break in the game and found find the stuff so all all the stuff that you work on it, uh, uh, is useful. Uh, never throw in anything. Keep all all the stuff that. Oh, you definitely. Yeah, because you might be, be able, you might be able to recycle it yes. for another game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Interesting. Cool. Cool rule of thumb. Save all your stuff. Mm -hmm. All stuff could be useful. Yes. So I'm I'm curious, uh, Thomas. What is next for you? Uh, and what's the best way to contact you? Uh, well, the best way is talk us on talk us on Facebook page on uh, Double Thoughts Game page, and uh, that's the best way I think. Uh, uh, I I have to create an email now for the team. I I I have to do that now. <laughs> but the way the best way is on Steam maybe. Uh, on Greenlight Steam on Facebook. That's the way, best way to contact us. Okay. Well, Thomas, it appears that we're out of time for this episode of the Daily Dev Talk. It was nice talking to you and a few cool things to consider. Thanks. They're highlighting the importance of a good desk and chair and free sound effects. Interesting website worth checking out. Yes. Stay tuned, Overload Nation. More episodes to come. Thanks for listening to today's episode of the Daily Dev Talk with me, Adrian Nanchev. If you are a game developer that wants to get your name and game out there and to share your experiences and stories, or you have feedback or opinions of the show, then contact me at info at gameoverload.co.uk. That's info at gameoverload.co.uk. Stay tuned for tomorrow's episode. More to come.